In this tutorial I want to show you how you can make a sprite sheet out of a 3D model. Some parameters have to be exactly like shown so that the resulting sprite sheet can be used satisfactorily. First of all, select everything by pressing A and then hit the delete button to delete everything in the active scene. The next thing you want to do is import your 3D model. In my example it's an FBX file, so I selected import and an FBX. This is going to be the 3D model I'm going to use in this tutorial. And as you can see it's a car consisting of many different meshes. The next thing you're going to do is to position your model in the middle of the world. This can be achieved by pressing 1 and then pressing G to move the car, press Y or X, I don't know which one right now, uh, to move it only in one direction. Then you do this with Z with the z-axis too, by pressing G and then Z, so you can only move it in the up-down direction. When you got that, you press 3 to get the side view, and then you do the same thing, but with uh, the other one of X and Y. So you have the middle of the car in the middle of the world, and you can check by creating a cube and seeing if the middle of the tires are at the edge of the cube. Then you got a 3D model in the middle of the active scene. Next thing, you might want to change to the cycles render, which is ray tracing, and then to GPU. Then you select your sample sampling count. I use 50 in rendering because the resulting graphic isn't too big, so 50 is okay. You can also do 128, it's up to your GPU. And for the viewport, which is just a viewport, um, I sometimes use 1 to 10 just to have a quick glance at it rendered. Next thing is setting the resolution, which is quadratic. The frame count is the parameter directly responsible for the direction count of your vehicle in Factorio, for example. So you have 128 directions the car can be directed to, so you change the blender settings to 128. You can also do 16, 32, 64, uh, it's up to you. Um, the normal, normal direction count in Factorio for cars or vehicles is for, uh, 64. Next, you want to say Blender where it should uh, save your renderings. Um, for example, I chose this path. You might want to choose a subfolder called Render or something else, so that it can uh, it's it's properly ordered. Okay, next thing we need a camera, of course, which you will be positioning like me, for example. So we have it on one axis and directed at the origin. choosing 180 degrees Z and 45 degrees X, which is the direction the entities in Factorio are rendered. It's also the direction you'll be later choosing for the sun. So the sun comes not directly from the top and not from um, zero degree, but from 45. Okay, then you have to change the camera setting to auto graphic, otherwise it's looking shit. Then you can choose an environment texture, which will emulate a um, environment and not just a single light source, which will definitely look better in game because you have some colors and some different light values. Then you have to make it transparent so that you don't see the background in the final render. You can adjust the shading of your 3D model as your heart desires. I'm not going to show that right now because it's really a personal choice and a thing which is uh, different from model to model. The next thing you're going to do is um, giving the 3D model parts, if your model has more than one part, a parent by adding a empty 
and then selecting every 3D model you wanna parent and dragging it with shift into the empty. So every 3D model in that empty is going to be moved by moving the empty, which we will be needing when animating. Next step is actually giving the empty a animation keyframes and we want to rotate it 360 degrees so we jump to the 64th frame and then adjust the rotation 180 degrees and do that for the 128th frame and we need to interpolate it linear so that it does look smooth. Selecting 60 frames per second so that it's smooth. It's not really important for later steps, but it's just a visual thing. Then you have to increase the autographic scale, maybe. In my example, I did have to because the car was too big. Next, you want to add a plane on 0, 0, 0. This is going to be our shadow catcher for rendering the shadows. Um, just give it a random material, white and nothing special, because it's going to ignore that anyway if you're going to set it up as a shadow catcher. This plane is only going to show shadows and do nothing else. Then you might want to add a sun for the later shadow rendering. You can position it wherever you want, but the rotation is important. Choosing 45 degrees from the side. Now you can see two shadows, the one from the environment texture and the one from the sun. The one from the sun is going to be used later. Now you have to again adjust your autographic scale because the shadow has to be in it of course. And you have to jump to certain keyframes or steps in the animation to see if it actually fits and you only can do that in the rendered mode otherwise shadow isn't going to be rendered After doing that, I'm just um, making the plane and the sun in invisible so that the, the first render, which is going to be the object, is not um, influenced by the sun. This is your final render, but you can see it's really noisy, so we're going to add a denoise filter in the composition tab. Now it's pretty smooth. Next thing is actually putting the environment texture where there's a sun actually in the 
correct direction, which is it, which it is not in my example. Um, the thing is, the cars rotated um, a little bit more as my other models, so I'm so I cannot use my 53 degrees I'm always using. So I have to see which one is correct. And it really depends on the environment texture. Just have to see where the sun is and then gradually watch it move. And when it's directly at the side, it's perfect. Make the background transparent again. Now we can render the animation. Depending on your graphics card or your CPU, this is going to be taking longer or shorter. I'm just stopping it right now because I wanted to change the CPU because my CPU is currently faster than my GPU. Don't judge, please. <laughs> And I'm also making a new folder where I put all my renderings. And then I'm adjusting the starting frame so that it doesn't render everything from the start. Again, setting the output folder to the correct one. And rendering again. So now we have all your renderings. You gonna rename the last one to 0000. So we have 128 frames. Now you just have to pack it into a sprite sheet. And for that I can recommend a website which is packing your renderings into a sprite sheet, but you can also write your own sprite sheet maker with Python for example, like I did, because sometimes you need different sizes, different configurations, but for a simple one frame per animation sprite sheet this is sufficient. Think of a good name of your sprite sheet, put some numbers in there and then do the second one because I'm doing two ones because um, the, the non high resolution sprite sheets of graphics in, in general for Vactorio are only allowed to be 4096 um, pixel times 4096 pixels and for the high resolution it's uh, a double of that which is 8192 so keep that in mind when making a sprite sheet so it's um, 8 times 8 which is 64 by 8 times the single frame size which is 500 you get the size of 4000 which is just below the maximum for non HR and yeah so 8 times 8 is okay if you're rendering your high resolution sprite sheets you change the resolution to the double of the normal um, which is going to normally take four times the time to render but depends on the model then you can also just put it into an 8 times 8 matrix because it's 8000 pixels then which is okay for HR important thing to notice is that you have to start with the looking north direction then going east south and west because the game is going to use it like that next thing i'm going to show you is how to render the shadow sprite sheet going to make the plane and sun visible and put the environmental texture to strength zero and then you have to adjust every 3D model in the scene seen by the camera to 
not visible to the camera because you only want the shadow. If you're having some additional light sources, you also might want to disable the diffuse, glossy and volumetric thing I can't read right now. But yeah, you only want the shadow on the shadow catcher plane. And right now you can see it's only the shadow. The thing I only noticed later is that the light source, the sun, has a angle set up so the texture is a little bit blurred so that you have to adjust the sun angle to zero degree which you will see me doing it later but yeah now you just render your shadow with the same camera with the same resolution two times for non-hr and hr and you're also going to make the sprite sheet just as you did with the object you also might want to put your files in different folders so it doesn't get overwritten. Now I'm noticing that I have a degree set up. So I'm also showing you where to change that. It's really sharp now. But anyway, this is how it's done. I hope I could explain satisfactorily to you how to make a sprite sheet out of a 3D model. How to use it in Factorio, however, is a story for another day. Have a good one.